the knower versus learner shift. One of the things that really hit me about this that, that really kind of um, shifted my whole, really uh, just to use the phrase, it blew my mind, <clears throat> was spending a lot of time with three-year-olds. As you've, if some of you have read the article that's been put out, I know I'm kind of backing in and out of the microphone, but I'm getting a hunch back and the thing doesn't adjust, so. Um, I was, uh, if you've been reading the article, then there's a, it start, starts off with a story about a little boy named Darren, who's my son. And he has been, along with a, uh, a process of, I mean, I, I went through, about eight years ago, I went through a, some people would call it sabbatical, some people would call it, you know, a visit to Mars, which is consistent with where we started earlier, a kind of learning binge that lasted for a year. And during the, during the process of doing that, um, at first I was learning about things. I was learning about physics and history and anthropology and whatever it was that, that drew, drew me, that turned me on. And uh, after a while, what I started to uh, learn about what I became most interested in was why it was that it was so difficult to learn. What was it that was so frustrating about the learning process? What was the obstacle? How is it that I had learned not to learn deeply? How would that happen to me? And as this started to happen, coincident with this kind of thing happening in my life, Darren came along, this little baby boy who was totally learning oriented. I mean, he was nothing, I mean, I've never, you know, I've never had so much joy or so much engagement or so much, um, I've been touched so deeply as watching this little baby learn. Always, never not learning, always. And one of the things that in particular really stunned me was that at the age of three, I got, I got hundreds of Darren stories we're not gonna be able to get into today, but I am gonna tell a few of them. At the age of three, he, uh, he had a whole bunch of buddies over, and they were all playing in the living room. And uh, I, well, I know that I'm going to make a little parenthetical pause, a little offline comment for a second. I know some of you are familiar with the enterprise school, and so the whole concept of enterprise, I want to use that as a metaphor real quickly. If any of you have watched the show Star Trek and the Enterprise, you know there's this period when the ship goes from warp speed to sublight, and it goes whoom, and drops in. Right, I want to use that throughout the day to kind of describe a, a gestalt switch or a drop-in that I experience quite frequently with children. It's kind of like that, where I hear them out in the adult world, and then all of a sudden, whoom, I fall in and I'm with the kids in some different way. So this was one of those experiences where I kind of fell in with the kids, and I was watching Darren play with these kids. And uh, what started to occur to me is, is that the kids would be trying to draw each other out well, let's go do this, or I want you to understand this. They were talking to each other, communicating, and that what, what I picked up on was is that as, when children wanted to not participate with each other, when they didn't want to be together, when they didn't want to listen to one another, what they said was, I know. They would say, well, I know. And it was just like that. I mean, I saw it. I could feel it. It was like it was just like pushing off on each other. It was a disinvitation. So the children would start to have a conversation, and if one of them didn't want to hear anything, it would go, I know. And it just it hit me like a bomb. Here they are. They haven't even been to school. They're three years old, and they are using I know to push each other off. What hope is there for the world? So you might say that, that this I know switch not only exists way up at the 64 mile view about what happens in business, which we're going to get to, but it's real deep. It's real pervasive. It's in each of us. We use it, whether we're aware of it or not, like a shield and a screen and a push off. It's a disinvitation, a closure. And I'm not trying to say there's anything wrong with knowledge or knowing, except the mechanism rather than the living knowing, the machine that knows, rather than the human nervous system that's knowing. And, and we'll get further into that. <clears throat>